Good morning and welcome to worship. Uh, we are very glad that we have been able to gather together this day uh, to sing God's praise and to hear the story of God's redemptive activity in this world. If you are worshiping with us for the first time this day, we are glad that you are present with us. And we hope that this time of worship will help you to understand God and understand your role in God's work in this world a bit better. Um, maybe if you don't know God, this will be an opportunity for you to be introduced to the love of God in Jesus Christ. We gather this day to celebrate the story. We gather this day to be reformed into God's people. So may we worship God, seeking God's presence, seeking God's instruction, seeking God's guidance, and seeking God's call in our lives. And as we begin to focus our heart's attention on the God whom we love and who loves us, the God who has called us and the God whom we serve, I invite you to join with me in the reading of Psalm 62. My soul finds rest in God alone. My hope comes from God, who alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. My, my salvation, salvation and my, my honor, honor rest, rest on, on God, God, who is my mighty rock, my, my refuge. refuge. O people, trust in God at all times. Pour out your heart before God, who is a refuge for us. Those, Those of low of estate, estate are, are but a breath. Those, Those of, of high estate, estate are a delusion. delusion. Do not trust in extortion or take pride in robbery. If riches increase, do not set your heart on them. Power and unfailing love belong to you, O God. You repay all according to their work. you to join with me in our call to worship. Come, let us gather to proclaim the glory of the reign of God. Come, Come let, us let us stop, stop evil acts against, against our, our sisters, sisters and, and brothers. brothers. Oh, let us rejoice in the deliverance of our mothers and fathers. Let, let our, our souls, souls explode, explode with, with the majestic, majestic power, power of the Lord. Lord. And God speaks, let us hear receive, and obey. Well, good morning and welcome once again to our worship service here at Linden Baptist Church. It's a new day the Lord has made. We rejoice, we're glad in it. It's another opportunity to sing praise to God and to tell the God who loves us that we love Him. So let's join together in singing 10,000 reasons. Bless the Lord.
May we pray together. Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, we, your children, bless your name. We, your children, seek to hallow your name in all that we say and in all that we do. As we gather to praise you this day, may the offering of our joy and thanksgiving be like sweet incense to you. May the joy of our faithfulness and our service to you be like sweet incense. And in those places, Lord, this day where we need a correction, where we need to be reminded again of who we are and what you have called us to do, help us to hear your Spirit speaking to us. Lord, as we worship you this day, may we come to love you more. And may we come to serve you better. And may our lives as individuals and a church grow more into the image of Jesus Christ, your Son and our Savior and Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. Our next hymn will be Just As I Am. Today we um, will be reminded, like we are every Sunday, of the grace of God. We know that God is the creator of all things, that God is powerful and God is holy. And we're none of those things. And so we recognize when we know our own hearts and we know our secret sins, the things that we think and the things that we do, we recognize that we need the grace that God has offered us in his love. And we pray today that we can offer that same grace that God's given us to other people. God invites us to come just as we are. And he invites even our enemies to come just as they are. So let's sing together.
Jesus invites us to come to him just as we are. But in coming to Jesus, we don't stay in the place that we were when we first came to Jesus. In coming to Jesus, we are offering ourselves to be reformed and to be remade, or as the Apostle Paul says, to be shaped into the very image of Jesus Christ. The time of confession is a time when we recognize that we still have a ways to go. And that perhaps we have even taken a step or two back on that journey. And it's a time for us to recommit ourselves to allowing the Lord Jesus Christ to shape us, to form us, and to recreate us more and more into his image. So in that spirit, I invite you to join with me in this time of confession. Trusting in the promise of grace, let us pour out our hearts before God. Will you pray with me? Forgiving God, we repent of all the ways we turn from you. You call, but we do not listen. You show us your path, but we prefer our own way. Forgive us, heal us, and lead us back to you, that we may show mercy to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. In Jesus Christ, you are forgiven by God and given new life. So may the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And And also also with with you. you. When Jesus called us, he called us to come and to follow him, to live a life like Jesus lived, full of love and grace. Let's sing together, wherever he leads, I'll go, as we commit ourselves once again today to being true disciples of our Lord Jesus. Take up the 
Let us pray. Draw us close, O Lord. Enfold us in your arms. Fill us with your spirit to respond to your call, that we might reflect your light and love, that we may speak your word with boldness in all our relationships, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim it, the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk. And he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he said he would bring upon them. He did not do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Circumcision is nothing. Uncircumcision is nothing but obeying the commandments of God is everything. Let each of you remain in the condition in which you were called. Were you a slave when called? Do not be concerned about it. Even if you can gain your freedom, make use of your present condition now more than ever. For whoever was called in the Lord as a slave is a freed person belonging to the Lord. Just as whoever was free when called is a slave of Christ. You were bought with a price. Do not become slaves of human masters. In whatever condition you are called, brothers and sisters, there remain with God. Now concerning virgins, I have no command of the Lord, but I give my opinion as one who by the Lord's mercy is trustworthy. I think that in the view of the impending crisis, it is well for you to remain as you are. Are you bound to a wife? Do not seek to be free. Are you free from a wife? Do not seek a wife. But if you marry, you do not sin, and if a virgin marries, she does not sin. Yet those who marry will experience distress in this life, and I would spare you that. I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short from now on. Let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it, for the present form of this world is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks. be to be God. God. So we turn to the reading of the gospel. We'll sing together. Hallelujah. Give thanks. Gospel of Mark. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. 
repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men, and they followed him. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. To him be glory and honor and power and might, now and forever. Amen. Sing once again. Jonah is an interesting character. Uh, we don't know whether perhaps the story of Jonah is a true story of a true prophet um, or whether it's a story that is m like maybe Ruth and Esther that uh, was told in order to help the people of God struggle with an important truth. But we encounter Jonah when God calls him. And God taps Jonah on the shoulder one day and, and says to Jonah, Jonah, I've got a job for you to do. I, 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 boy, have I got some good work for you to do. I want you to go to Nineveh. Now, for those of us who live in the United States in the 21st century, Nineveh, may just sound like some far off place in some far off land, but to the people of Israel, Nineveh was, was, was a, a reminder, it was a place that reminded them of the Assyrian influence in the region. It, it reminded them of the Assyrian threat. It, it reminded them of the contingency even of their own lives. And if we assume that perhaps the book of Jonah may have actually been penned uh, sometime after the, the fall of Israel, uh, then certainly we're dealing with uh, a certain amount of, of uh, grief and maybe even a certain amount of animosity that the people of Israel or the people of Judah might have had towards the Assyrians for the destruction of the nation. But whatever the historical context of Jonah is, Nineveh symbolized for Jonah and for the people of Israel um, everything that was wrong in the world, everything that was wrong uh, with their status as the people of God. It, 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 it symbolized for them and stood for them as a threat to their very well-being. It was maybe be what we would call in our day and time an existential threat to the nation. And God taps Jonah on the shoulder, and God says to Jonah, Jonah, I've got a job for you to do to go to Nineveh. And I want you to proclaim the message that I'm going to give you to the Ninevites. And of course, Jonah wasn't about to have any of that. He, he wasn't about to, to be engaged in anything that God wanted to say to the Ninevites. 
Now, I find it interesting, if you go back and read in the very first of the book of Jonah, God doesn't tell Jonah initially what he wants Jonah to say to the Ninevites. And so Jonah is left to kind of speculate what it is that God wants to say. But, either, but even if it's a, a message of condemnation and judgment that God is going to overthrow the Ninevites and God is going to overthrow the Assyrians, I'm sure that Jonah didn't want to have any part of that because, I mean, after all, he was an, an Israelite and, and that would be to threaten his very life if he were to go and proclaim a message from God that God had the intent of redeeming and saving the Ninevites. Uh, well, certainly Jonah didn't want to have anything to do with that because after all, the Ninevites represented the mortal enemy of the people of God. And so Jonah does the only thing that Jonah knows how to do and, and makes the only response that seems reasonable to Jonah, and that is that Jonah gets on a boat and heads in exactly the opposite direction from Nineveh. He gets on a boat and tries to go in the opposite direction as far as he can possibly go so that he does not have to do what God had called him to do, and that is to take a word of God to his enemies. Now, if we let that sink in for just a moment, perhaps we can become a little less judgmental of Jonah. Because God is asking Jonah to go and speak a word of God and a word from God to Jonah's enemies. We know from the end of the book of Jonah that Jonah had a suspicion that God wasn't going to just preach judgment and condemnation on Nineveh. And even if God's message to Nineveh was one of judgment and condemnation, it was with the hopes that the people of Nineveh would repent and be saved. And Jonah is not about to be a messenger from God to his enemies. Just, just let that sink in for a moment. And ask ourselves, have we ever felt called by God to go and speak a word from God to the people that we consider to be enemies? Have we ever been had the experience of feeling a call from God to go and speak a word from God that would lead to the salvation and the redemption and the healing of our enemies. Well, I would imagine a lot of us might take great joy and glee if we felt like God wanted us to go to our enemies and denounce them. Some of us may take great joy and glee if we felt like that what God wanted us to do was to go to our enemies and tell them what bad people they are and, and, to, and to say that God just intends to wipe you out and to destroy you and, and take great joy in pronouncing that kind of word from God. You see, Jonah knows God. He knows God only too well. And he knows that any word that comes from God to anybody has the ultimate aim of redeeming that person, redeeming those persons. It has the ultimate aim of helping those persons to find life and to turn away from the kind of destructive life that they are now living. So Jonah gets on a boat and goes in the opposite direction because he doesn't want to have any part of proclaiming a word from God to the Ninevites. Have we ever run away from proclaiming the word of God, the word of God's hope, the word of God's salvation, the word of God's calling, the call from God to repent and change? Have we ever run away from, from making that proclamation, bringing that word to our enemies? Oh, well, we know the story. Jonah 
runs in the opposite direction. He's in a sea, he's in a boat on the sea, and the sea is, has a great storm that comes up, and the boat is threatened to be capsized and to, be, and to sink, and they're throwing everything overboard. And Jonah says to the people, throw me overboard because I'm the cause. I'm the reason why this great storm has come up because I'm running from God. I'm running from God's commission. I'm running from God's call. And so they throw Jonah overboard, and we know he's swallowed by a great fish, and he stays in the belly of that fish for three days and nights. And while he's in the belly of the fish, he decides it's probably a good thing if he does what it is that God has called him to do. And so he says to God, okay, God, I, I will, I'll do, I'll go to the Ninevites. And the fish throws him up on the seashore, and Jonah cleans himself off and scrapes up what little dignity he has left and heads towards Nineveh. Now, the scriptures tell us that Nineveh was a huge city. I was thinking a three-day walk across a city. Uh, that, that, that would mean the city would, would be bigger than from here to Lexington um, in many respects. And Jonah enters the city. And as he enters the city, God gives him a word to speak. And the word is that God is giving the Ninevites 40 days, 40 days to come to grips with their life, 40 days to come to grips with the, the call of God and the demand of God, 40 days to come to understand that God is, is God and that God is calling them. And if they don't, then God is going to destroy them. But if they do, well, Jonah never says that part of the message you note. It's also interesting to me that Jonah doesn't go all the way into the city. Now you'd think if, if you wanted to have an impact on a city, that you would go to the heart of the city. That, that you would go to the, to the place where the, the business and the, the political leaders were, the, the core of the city, which would probably be more in the middle of, of Nineveh, a day and a half journey at least. But, but Nineveh... But, but, Jonah doesn't even go all the way into the city. He, he just goes a third of the way into the city and, and says what God has proclaimed for him to say. And the word spreads. And the word spreads from the outskirts of the city, the far suburbs into the city, and finally reaches the king. And the king doesn't hear this message from the lips of Jonah, but he hears this message from the lips of those who are reporting to him what Jonah has been saying. And as a result, the king repents and calls on a day of fasting and a day of repentance and a day of prayer, calling on the people to turn to God so that they might be spared. Now, the text that we read for today doesn't tell us what Jonah's reaction to that was, but we but many of us who know the story know what Jonah's reaction to it was. Jonah goes outside the city and sits on a hill waiting on God to destroy the city. And when God doesn't destroy the city, then Jonah sulks. And he gets mad at God. And he says, when, when God asks him what's wrong, he says, Well, I knew if I went here and proclaimed this message, I knew what was going to happen. That these people would, would hear this message and that you would have mercy on them. Jonah couldn't see that God had any business saving his enemies. God didn't have any business having mercy on those who not only were Jonah's enemies, but because they put themselves in the position of being the enemies of Israel, had become the enemies of God. And it's interesting to me that God offers the enemies first the offer of life, with a warning for sure, but the offer of life. It's not an easy thing. It's not an easy thing to go to people who seek to do us harm. It's not an easy thing to go to people who oppose us. It's not an easy thing to go to people who are antagonistic to what we believe and what we stand for. 
it, it's not easy to, be, to go to people whose, whose whole way of life and way of living and seeing the world seems at polar opposites to ours and to talk with them about the ways of the Lord. It's much easier to stand back and hurl darts. It's much easier to stand back and lob fireballs at them. It's much easier to stand back and curse them. It's much easier to stand back and label them. It's much easier to stand back and hope for their destruction than it is to hear the call of God. To go to those who are the enemy and seek to make friends. To call even those who are in darkness, even those who are opposed to the way of God, to repent and to turn and to come to God. And yet that is what we are called to do. We, we are called, as the writer of John's gospel says, to go into a world that is in darkness, a world that has refused in many respects to open its eyes and to see the God of creation and the God of love. We are called to go into a world where many people are just flat indifferent but many people are, indif are, are also uh, opposed to the very proclamation that there is a God who loves us and cares for us. We are called to go into a world that is filled with the love of power, filled with the love of money, filled with the love of self, and a message that Jesus calls on us to proclaim that invites people to repent and turn from their love of self, their love of power, their love of money, their, their love of all kinds of idols, and to turn and repent and, and to worship God and to worship God alone is, is the calling that we have been given. And, and many of us recognize that is not an easy calling in our world. We, we, are, we have been given the calling to go and to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. The good news of Jesus Christ who calls on us to love our enemies, to pray for our enemies, to do good to our enemies. We are called to go into this world to proclaim a message that, that invites us to not return evil for evil. In other words, if people hate us, we don't return hate for hate. If people curse us, we don't return cursing for curses. We, we are called to share the love of Christ and to create a new community not built on the love of self and power and money and greed, but, but to build a new community based upon the love of God in Jesus Christ. And many of us would probably rather do anything other than that. Because it's hard. It isn't easy. It won't always be well received and we know that. People won't always listen to us or hear us and we know that. People will not always receive it. Sometimes people will just turn away. Sometimes people will actively reject. Sometimes people will mock what we are saying about the love of God in Jesus Christ. We know that it is not easy. And sometimes we, like Jonah, find ourselves in the position of turning away from what God is calling us to do and going in a different direction. Now, it may be actively, like Jonah did. We may actually actively just involve ourselves in other things, anything other than doing what God is calling us to do. Sometimes our running away from what God is calling us to do may simply be just our indifference. Uh, we've gotten so comfortable with our own group of people. We've gotten, so un we've gotten so comfortable with those who like us and who we like 
that we have grown cold and indifferent to a world that needs to hear the challenge from God to turn around, to turn away from the path of destruction, the path of hate, the path of greed, the path of division. But I wonder sometimes if one of the reasons that we, like Jonah, turn away and go away from what God is calling us to do is because, like Jonah, we really don't want God to save some people. We would be just as happy if God would just condemn them and consume them in a ball of fire. And if that's our attitude, then, then maybe we need to spend some time in the belly of the fish. Maybe we need to spend some time contemplating the love of God, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ for us and for this world. We need to get back in touch with the call of God in Jesus Christ to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength and to love our neighbor. Yes, even our enemy neighbor, but to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. And maybe we need to repent. To repent of our attitudes towards people. Maybe we need to repent of our indifference. Maybe we need even to repent of our fear. Remembering what the word repentance means. It doesn't mean falling down on our knees in, in tears, but it means the resolve to change and to walk a different way. You see, we serve a God whose intent in Jesus Christ is to make friends out of enemies, to bring those who are not reconciled to God into a reconciled relationship with God. We serve a God who is seeking to break the cycle of destruction within the human community and to make of this broken humanity a new humanity created and made in the image of Jesus Christ. And we, we who are the church, the disciples of Jesus Christ, have been called. We have been called to be fishers of people, as Jesus said to Peter and James and John and Andrew. We have been called to join Jesus Christ to going into this world as threatening as it may feel to us and to proclaim that God loves the world so much that he sent his only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And we go with that message knowing that God did not send Jesus into the world to condemn the world. Because the world was condemned already. But he sent Jesus into the world so that all the world might be saved. Will you pray? We confess to you, O oh Lord, that too much of the time, like Jonah, we move in, opposite, in the opposite direction of your calling. Sometimes we run, sometimes we walk, and sometimes we just sit there. Lord, help us to see this world. Not just those who are like us, not just those who like us, but help us to see this world as you see it. 
and help us to see the people, even those folks that we consider to be our enemies, our foes, those who are so different from us that we can't even understand them. Help us to see them as your beloved children. And help us to be willing to share in word and in deed the message of your love and salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Both in the passage from Jonah as well as the gospel passage today, we hear the words of calling. God calls Jonah, Jesus calls Andrew and Peter and James and John, just as Jesus through the Holy Spirit calls each one of us to get up and to follow him. If you're worshiping with us this morning and you have never answered the call of Jesus Christ in your life to join him, to join him in the new community with God, the new community with God's people, to join him in God's work of redeeming love in this world, we invite you this morning to get up from wherever you are just like Simon and, and Andrew and James and John did. Get up from wherever you are and follow Jesus. If you would like some help on that journey, help in that decision, we're open to being able to listen and to talk and to share and to help. And we would welcome the opportunity to touch base with you. And all of us, Maybe those of us who've been Christians for most of our life need to spend time reflecting on how faithfully we are executing the call that God has given us in Jesus Christ. So in these next few moments, will you consider the invitation of God to you this day? And will you take time to respond to God's call? take time each week to offer a prayer of intercession. And as we pray today, may you keep the message in your mind, in the front of your mind, that we have been called to take the kingdom of God into this world. As you pray with me, may that be our prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Help us to know you, to bless, worship, and praise you for all your works and for all that shines forth from them. Help us to direct our living, all that we say and think and do, so that your name will be honored and praised wherever we go, where you send us. Rule us by your word, lead us with your spirit in such a way that more and more we submit to you. Keep your church strong and add to it. Destroy all forces that revolt against you and conspire against your word. 
Do this until your kingdom is complete. Help us and all people to reject our own wills and obey you, for your will alone is good. Help all persons to carry out the work we are called to, willingly and faithfully. You alone are holy. There is none like you. You stoop down to lift up the needy. In Christ, your kingdom has already come. In mercy, O Lord, answer the prayers of your people, of all who are in distress. Restore those in need of your healing touch. Nourish us in body, in mind, and in soul. Bring justice for the suffering of your people. Hear our prayer for the kingdom, the power, and the glory is yours now and forever. Amen. Well, as we begin to draw this time of worship to a close, let me remind you of some things that are happening each week that give you an opportunity to be engaged in worship uh, and in Bible study. On Tuesday afternoons at 1.30, uh, I'm leading a Bible study uh, on the book of Ecclesiastes. On Thursday afternoons at 2.30, Larice is leading a Bible study out of the book of Mark. Uh, you can find the Tuesday Bible study and the Thursday Bible study on Facebook. Uh, and also the, two, the Thursday Bible study is on YouTube. On Wednesday evening at 6.30 uh, on Facebook, you can tune in to our Wednesday evening prayer service. Uh, if you'd like to be a part of our Zoom call at 5.30, which is our Wednesday evening fellowship dinner, uh, and you don't get an email from us regularly about that, please feel free to call us or to uh, send us an email, and, and we will include you on that call. On Sunday mornings at 9.30, uh, by way of Zoom, we have our regular Sunday school uh, program, our Bible study program. And again, if you'd like to be a part of one of those Bible study groups, uh, please uh, let us know, and we'll make sure that you are included uh, in those Zoom activities. We do have a birthday to celebrate uh, today, uh, and uh, so we want to sing a happy birthday uh, this Sunday to Ray who's be celebrating his birthday tomorrow, I think. So let's sing happy birthday to Ray. Happy birthday to you. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you today and every day. Amen and amen. We conclude our time of worship. Let's sing together our benediction hymn. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you. And remember today that God loves you and that we love you. live in joy as you love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. alleluia.